we're going to go up to the categories and go to sounds. And this is where we have a listing of the sounds that, you know, we, you know, that we want to create according to, you know, what they sound like. And, and that's probably more helpful than the name of a synthesizer. So at this moment, I'd like to maybe incorporate some sort of pad. So I'm going to go to the pads. I'm going to listen through. And we're going to drag that into this empty area here. That's just, that's why it says drop files and devices here. We can do that or you can double click and it creates a new track. And um, just like last week, we have our um, keyboard uh, icon here activated and that allows us to use our, our um, computer keyboard as a uh, keyboard, which is can be used to enter notes. So we talked a little bit about macros and what these guys are called macros here. And what they are um, are knobs that have been programmed by whomever created this sound. Um, and there's a lot behind every macro. Um, sometimes you've got multiple parameters that are being controlled by one knob. Um, here, it just looks like it's just a filter uh, cutoff, and I, I want to just lower that down. And... Maybe this one here. Try to find our sweet spot with this sound. And sometimes you realize you just don't like that sound, and you keep going. Try that one. Okay. Let me. I'm going to select a different one because I'll explain that in a second. It's the greatest pad. So we're going to come up with some sort of a composition based on this sound right here. And um, let's find our click, press play, and hear what we've got. And I'm actually going to use my keyboard, keyboard here. Is obviously a chord so it becomes a little more difficult to create something so just gonna basically create just a double click and um, create a, a clip and I'm actually just gonna draw a note in I'm gonna find the note that I want right here I'm gonna scroll to through until I find something that's good enough G Gonna work in G. Let's try that and press play. And we've got our beginning to our track. And once again, we can use our hot swap mode to change that. And we can use our arrow keys. Find a different sound. Hmm. This is interesting. I've got 
that's exactly what I was looking for. Something that won't get in the way. Perfect, so we have a nice drone going. And in fact, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this node I created here and select it and gonna control click and actually, um, actually this is not available in control click. What you're gonna do is actually shift and use your arrow keys to go down one octave. So going to extend that and how am I going to do that? I'm going to select this uh, loop brace here and control and duplicate loop. I'm going to do that twice and then I'm just going to extend this. So we get a nice continuous perfect. All right. So now we've got our foundation, this swell pad. Um, the next thing I wanna do is actually show you guys what's going on underneath these uh, macros, just so that you understand what's going on. So you can actually go to the show hide uh, icons right over here. You've got the show hide devices and show hide chain lists. We're gonna show hide our devices and that opens them up. And at this point, you're gonna, you're gonna see what's underneath here, uh, this uh, little um, collection of, um, of macros. Uh, what we have here is a wavetable synthesizer, and then we have a couple of different effects here, which we haven't gone into just yet. But yeah, so basically these knobs here are controlling specific parameters within um, within Ableton, uh, within, I'm sorry, within this uh, uh, wavetable instance. And, you know, we can actually customize this ourselves. Let's say we wanted to add this, uh, this uh, knob right over here to this same um, uh, macro. We can control click and we can add, add that to, to the same uh, knob and now we're controlling both things as you can see I don't know if that's gonna be a good thing but yeah we just turn up the frequency we might be able to hear better but nope that's okay because we're just learning um, what it does so yeah so that's what a macro is and you know it can it, you can use that to control many different parameters. Um, you could also uh, extend um, what you see. So in, in fact, you can add, continue to, to, to add up to um, 16 of these and you can also decrease until you can see only one. And that's actually a new feature in 11, which is actually really quite great. Um, so yeah, th that's macros and those are macros for you. Um, so we have our swell pad, which is just swell, and we need to add different elements to it. So let's do that. Let's find ourselves something else. And let's, let's do this by creating a MIDI track this time. Um, we're gonna go to the create menu and go to insert MIDI track. And there's our MIDI track. Uh, mine shows up with a drum rack because I did something which I can show you later. I'm just gonna delete those. Um, you can basically control what you wanna see in a new track. And that's what I did. You can just control click and save as default MIDI track. And once you do that, it asks, hey, do you wanna override it? And you say yes, and now every time you create a new MIDI track, it's going to look exactly, you know, at this point, it has nothing in it because that's what I saved. Um, but in the uh, previous case, I had a drum rack by default. But anyways, we want to find an instrument this time and let's just find an analog and put it in there. Um, 
play. So we've got a sawtooth by default. We can change this wave um, right over here. And we've got two oscillators. So we've got oscillator number one, oscillator number two, and we can, we can change the waveform. And the waveform is the foundation of every synthesizer. So yeah, so what we did there is uh, change to a sine wave, which is what I wanted to work with. I'm gonna turn up the volume a little bit. And let's show you, good. So let me show you um, one thing that I strongly recommend. We haven't really discussed effects just yet. Um, and um, what I'd like to do is introduce you to a couple of these as we go along. We're gonna focus more on that uh, in the next class, but um, um, the first one is a compressor and we're gonna add the compressor right afterwards. And the reason for that is a compressor takes a signal and um, it actually, um, you run the signal through it, and if it's too loud, you can control it. If it's too low, um, you can also control that as well so that it turns out more even sounding, if you will. And you can see it, <coughs> excuse me. Excuse me, you can see it working when you play the signal in, and you see the gain reduction going on right over here. We can turn up the ratio. And now we've effectively squeezed the sound so it's not too low or too high. And um, there's, there are aim, uh, endless tutorials on uh, compression, so I'm not going to get into that um, uh, too deep. But uh, it's just really helpful, and I highly recommend that you put a compressor on most everything, um, especially Ableton's compressor. It's really um, quite nice sounding. So yeah, so we have this analog instance and what I wanted to do is actually introduce you guys to the MIDI effects right over here. So MIDI effects are different. This is an audio effect which goes afterwards and processes the sound. This is a synthesizer which is the sound source. But a MIDI effect will control um, elements within the sound before the synthesizer, such as probably the most popular one, the arpeggiator, which we're going to drag right before the analog. And I'm just going to press uh, our note, our, it's a G that we're working in, so. And so we've got this repetition going on. So we can add steps right over here. We can even choose the key that we want to work in. So in this case, I would like to work in G minor. So we can also gate the sound or open it right up, which reminds me, I would like to actually, I'm just going to do this briefly. We're not going to get into synthesis too much but the amplifier um, circuit is, is within this analog, very basic subtractive synthesizer, you've got your oscillator um, right over here and you can select that and you'll see that everything changes right over here. And that is because um, these parameters here are going to address that particular module. So think of it like a modular synthesizer. Um, and if I select the filter, now everything changes to control the filter right over here. Um, what I'd like to do is select the amp, and this gives us this uh, envelope right over here, which will take our, um, our signal and um, allows us to make it really long. Excuse me, let me get rid of the arpeggiator to show this. Or really shorten it. got two oscillators, oscillator one and oscillator two. So we can, you see that the amp for 
oscillator two can be turned on here as well. And as you can see, we've got two of the same oscillators, so they sound exactly alike. So here's what I want to do. I want to take the octave on the second one and decrease it. And there you go. So very basic sound. I'm going to turn it down now. Cool. So let's go back to our arpeggiator. We can also decrease the rate or increase it here. Change the groove, swing, just to straight. Let's press play. Just going to play in this note, create a clip. Discuss this briefly uh, last time, but um, this is a uh, an audio track. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, a MIDI track with uh, you know an instrument on it. We also have send tracks right over here. We have a hybrid reverb and a delay in our send tracks, and these are addressed right over here with A and B. So I'm going to solo this so you can hear what it sounds like as I send it to as I send this little. Um, sequence into our hybrid reverb. So that's sweet, right? Let's hear what it sounds like going into the delay. So here's what our hybrid reverb looks like and our delay. wet at 100%, we've got the beat division set to thirds and fourths here, you can turn up the filter, I'm sorry, the feedback here, and you also do have a filter actually. how it sounds a little darker now or brighter or somewhere in between and you've got modulation as well good so let's hear that with our pad Go back to our arpeggiator. See what happens when we increase the steps. You could also mess with the uh, transpose distance. Get some different effects going on this way. And the track is beginning to have a vibe to it. We like that. Um, I do anyways. Here's what I like to do is kind of create a different note. So I'm going to option drag and create. Oops, that didn't happen. Okay, good. And I just want to hear what it sounds like with a different uh, note. And since this is a G, uh, it's a G minor. We're going to go with this A sharp right over here. So let's listen to our first. And our new one. We can do that once again. And this time... Instead, we're going to actually go to that G um, and um, 
use our shift arrow key down and hit that twice so we can um, get a low octave so cool got that now this and this cool now obviously <clears throat> The drone is simply playing one note at this point, and um, that's cool, but um, we might want to do other things. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to option uh, copy that, and um, let's see what happens. Let's move that to a G maybe? I'm, I'm sorry, F maybe? See, we, we can we can do the guesswork thing, or here's what we're gonna do instead. We're gonna hit the scale button right over here and enter scale mode. So Ableton then does the uh, the math for you or the thinking, and we can select G and we are working in G minor, so let's select G minor. So now any note that we that is in the, I'm sorry, that's in the scale mode once we fold it down is gonna be correct. So let's hear our first note. And continue doing this madness if we copy that clip then it will do the same thing so let's got to divide that into two notes and Hmm, do we want to do that or, oops, we can just duplicate that. Command D will duplicate that. So we have created three scenes and these are the scenes right over here. So let's hear what it sounds like with the first. Now the second scene. third I feel see this is you know the the composition kind of listens you, you listen to it and it kind of goes somewhere according to what you're listening to but at this point I'm hearing um, actually I want to copy this um, scene instead uh, and let's listen to that. Mm, that's what I hear. So, um, yeah, which is what was happening before that, which is the D. So, let's see what that sounds like from the beginning. here right so uh, let's add this particular uh, clip and here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you guys something really cool and that is automation we are ready for clip automation and um, all the magic that you can create with clip automation and here it goes I'm gonna double click on our clip and Maybe you guys have noticed this, uh, these tabs available here. And we've got a couple of different options here. 
we discussed the some of the velocity and um, velocity randomizations last time, which we worked on in the uh, drums. Um, but there are a couple of other tabs as well. We've got the uh, this tab right, right over here, which is the envelopes tab, which is where we want to work. What is an envelope? Um, well, an envelope is exactly the same thing I showed you right over here uh, when we clicked on the amp and and an envelope will basically determine um, how the sound will be shaped, how quickly it will start playing and um, that's usually called the attack. Let's turn right here. And so this is a quick attack at the moment. And let me just show you with the sound. I'm just going to solo it. So if I increase, well, let me just increase these guys first. The sustain. And let's increase the attack now. So you hear the, the first um, transient is becoming softer. of the sound increasing. Cool stuff. This is synthesis. 101. <coughs> Excuse me. Sustain. Going to keep that down. So, back to our esteemed um, envelope automation here. So here we now have um, an envelope uh, rubber band that's chosen for us because we selected uh, a parameter right, right over here. In this case, it was the uh, decay, We're messing with it here. Whatever you mess around with here will become available right here in your envelopes. And here's what you can do with that. You can click and create some rubber bandy movements and check out what happens now. I actually did it to the first one. So let's see what this looks like. See that? So you've got the invisible hand moving that around for you. And, you know, you can do that with anything. So let's do that with our rate for our arpeggiator. And I'm going to do that for, with the second. Wait, oops, I think I screwed that up need to do that. Um, anyways, back to that again. So I'm going to just mess with the uh, tempo on this. Okay, let's hear the first one now. Second one. Last one really increase that. Cool. So I'm going to get this out of solo and let's listen to these changes. Actually, let's have a look at them as well as we play. So pay attention to the rate knob, which has this little red dot here which indicates that it has been um, that it is uh, automated excuse me that took a second there so let's play that now see the 
to K moving as well. So to me, that sounds like, you know, a song about to become a song. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select all these guys and I'm going to copy them using option drag. And I'm just going to put them right here, leaving us this empty um, scene. In fact, I'm going to command R to rename it and give it a name. And I'm actually really going to call it empty. I want it to remain empty for a reason. I'm going to go back to our drums and um, I'm going to select all these drums and I'm just going to put them right here. I'm going to activate them again. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. It's going to be cool or it's going to be a disaster. Ready? Okay. Before I do anything, here's what I want to do. I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to find us an audio effect that will give us some, some sort of a build there. And reverb is going to do that for us. Um, let's just use hybrid reverb. It's the new one. It's dope. Um, that's a little too much reverb. Um, just, you know, a little background, this device, it's really cool. It's a blend between convolution reverb, which is this technology that, uh, they record a space and you've got recordings of space, um, that you can put your, you know, your, your sounds through and you can blend between that, which is to the left, right over here, or both. And you can blend with the typical algorithm, which is like a lexicon and, you know, a, a digital reverb, if you will. So um, here we've got the dark hall, quartz, shimmer, tides, and prism algorithms. So we can go through these and see which one we like better. Shimmer adds like a little, some top notes. Tides. So yeah, um, one thing you'll notice is that they're kind of engulfing the sound. And there's a reason why I didn't use the one on the send. I, I, I added it as a, an insert effect. And that's what this is called when you add an effect right on the same track. That's an insert effect. Um, the reason I did that is because I wanted to be just in on this particular sound and I want it to be different than this overall hybrid reverb um, that everything runs through, that I want it to run through. I wanted to use it as an effect. So um, again, this is kind of engulfing the entire sound. Um, what I'd like to do is use the EQ here to just get rid of some of the low frequencies. Cool. So here's a little secret here. I want to manipulate the decay and the dry wet at the same time. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to do that with macros, which we discussed earlier. So 
how do I create a macro? Well, very simple. Just exactly the way we group this track right over here to keep these guys in one place. We can do that with devices. We can actually group these, all of these together. We can group these three by selecting them, shift, selecting them, and command G, or just go right over here if you can't remember the shortcut, and group them all together. So once they're grouped, then all of a sudden you've got macros. Macros that don't have anything assigned to them because this is like your own thing now. You can create your own. You are rolling your own sounds now. I don't want to mess with the uh, analog, so I'm just gonna double click it and get it out of the way. Oh, we can also add our little arpeggiator. We don't want to forget that. Just put it right in here. That's right. We can add things to our group by just dragging it, right? So how are we going to do this? We need this one macro knob, which, by the way, that's all I want to see. I want to see just one knob of coolness. So well, how are we going to do this? You guessed correct. Um, you're going to control click and see that you can map up to 16 macros and they're invisible. You can only see one because I chose to only see one. I'm going to map that blend. Blend. No, no, no. That's not what I wanted to do. It's the decay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Decay to macro one and dry wet to macro one. Now macro one doesn't have a name. It doesn't have a color either. So we're gonna give it a color. It's gotta be blue because it's all about the reverb, the sky. And we're gonna then rename this. With our control, we have the power to see all these hidden menus. Um, well, they're not really hidden. They're actually up here, but they're shortcuts to these menus. Um, and what are we going to call this? We're going to call this uh, the, the Sky, right? Let's call it Sky. So, yeah. Now it's got its own name. And um, I'm going to keep it all the way down. See how it's controlling both knobs? I'm going to keep it all the way down. Up until this clip right over here. And... Um, this clip I'm going to go to our um, envelopes and you see sky is selected for us by the way any of any one of those macros are available for us there too and furthermore any instrument or group of instruments are available right over here and if you change um, the instrument then this will change right over here but I'm not going to do that I don't want to mess with you um, too much. This is more advanced knowledge. As it is, this is kind of advanced, but um, but it's cool. It's being recorded, so you, you guys can travel back to it and, and um, yeah, learn from it. So I click right over here, creating the first point, and I'm going to click again on the, at the end of this, and I'm going to drag that all the way up, and guess what's going to happen? Right? Exactly what you expect it to happen. And let's see what that looks like. See that? Pretty cool, huh? So let's hear what that sounds like again. So we've got our reverb being used on the sound here, which kind of encompasses the whole sound, but, but at the end we have this funky build, empty, oops, what did I do, I had it soloed, let's try that again, turn this down,
now in the last one I need to copy this clip which had that rise right we don't want it to do that like rise and you know I want it to just rise once so if we want it that to happen in a more seamless fashion, growing as time um, evolves. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back to our instrument rack and you see our sky little parameter that we've got going on here. What we're gonna do is we are going to unlink it. We're gonna unlink this envelope. And what, mean, what, what does that mean? Well, now it is linked to a loop. You notice everything loops within these clips. That's what Ableton does. That's why they created this whole thing called loop. It's all about the loop. Uh, and you can activate and deactivate the loop right here, by the way. But we're not doing that right now. We are simply deactivating the uh, link of this envelope to the entire thing. So by unlinking it, now I can take that last point and I can Extend that forever and use our zoom to zoom back and see what's going on. You notice you can't even see the note. The note is hidden because we're only dealing with the envelope and it's unlinked. So um, what happens if we link it again? See, it's linked to that note. Um, it's no longer linked to that note. So um, let's hear that. Oh, wait a second. I to undo that to get back to what I had. So here we go. See how it's rising? Wait, it's unlinked. Oh yeah, well, gotta. Yeah. That'll work better now. Rising slowly. And we move on to the next one. And uh, right about now we need some different element here. We we need some some we need some funky bass. Who agrees with me on that? Good. I'm glad we see eye to eye about that. So we are going to go to our instruments. No, we're gonna to go to our sounds. And um, what are we gonna do? We are going to go to our sounds and find our bass sounds, which are, where are they? They're right here. Okay. So we're gonna go through some bass sounds. <laughs> No, I'm not going to do that because I know exactly what I want. And um, how am I going to do that? I'm just going to create a MIDI track. And instead, I'm going to use the search function and find a sub. And now all that's available here are sounds that have to do with sub. Sounds like a crunchy sub. That'll satisfy my taste for sub. Okay, now this is some Max for Live device right over here. And if you guys are not down with Max for Live, go to maxforlive.com and see the amazing, the how many amazing devices are available there on there that are free. Um, you can also buy devices as well. Um, but yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but you know what? Let me just... I'm just going to find something that isn't a Max for Live because I don't want to go there just yet. Um, so yeah, we have a subtonic sound. And what I'm going to do is copy... I'm gonna copy the pad onto this here. 
the scene. And I'm going to play my instrument. Wait, I must enable the bass. You know what? I'm supposed to be a professional here. You, you, you see, have you noticed how everything is in red? I, I mean, I, you guys, I don't know if it sounds like crap, the whole, the whole thing. I hope not. I um, hope you guys would tell me if it sounds like crap. Um, and uh, what you got to do with that is you got to lower everything down. So I'm going to select the drums here. I, I want to keep this at unity level. So I'm just going to select the drum elements and bring them down. I'm going to do the same with the harmonic elements here. Yeah. And now see that everything is bouncing around somewhere around negative 12 and a little bit higher. Not reaching zero. That's where we want to be. And right about now we can actually put a um, compressor on the master bus. You don't have to do this. I like to do this only when I have the song bumping right about, you know, now. Just going to leave it with its, in its default state. And here's what it sounds like without. Yeah, so you just get a little more presence and evenness. Let's go back to the bass. So you may have noticed that I didn't press the record button and the reason for that is because this time I'm going to take advantage of the capture MIDI function and if you click on this little icon right over here then Ableton would have remembered what you were playing. And as far as MIDI notes are concerned, it's a bit like uh, the government listening <laughs> all the time. And um, yeah, so now we got this cool kind of bass line going on. Um, let's make it uh, perfect and use quantize and uh, make sure that all of our notes are selected by using Command A and Control. Uh, I'm going to go to our quantize settings here. And we are on eighth notes, which would have been not so good. Sixteenth notes, that'll do. Let's lower down the threshold so that we can um, have some realism. Let's hear that. I'm gonna turn it down on the macro here and turn up the drive. Get that compressor on there. Let's find ourselves a delay on that. Keep 
set to lay really low. Just wanted to add vibe, but not, you know. Cool. So we've got all of that going on now. So what we need to do is uh, maybe create another scene. So we're going to go to uh, our control and we're going to insert scene or command I would have done the job. Um, and you know what? I'm just going to, you know, instead of doing that, I'm going to undo that. And um, I'm going to control once again. And I am going to duplicate. That's what I'm going to do. And the same thing going on here, except I'm going to experiment with the uh, different. Uh, you know what? I'm going to undo that too because I want to show you something else. Here's what I'm going to do I'm going to play this. And I'm going to experiment with the different clips here. But that's the same note, right? Maybe I'm going to lower the octave down. So shift, arrow. No, I don't want to do that. Instead, keep things the way they are. Just going to add a different element. I'll show you what I was going to show you in a little while. So let's go to create. A new MIDI track. And right about now, this is when everything crashes and you're like, what did I do? Luckily, Ableton does um, save your sessions. So I'm not going to lose everything, but we are too smart for that. So we're going to go to File, Save, Live, Set, As. If you want to continue um, saving versions, you definitely want to do that versions always allows us to go back and um, you know in case we need it to go back so um, this is uh, week one so we are in week two and at this point we're looking at melodic or harmonic in, uh, elements so let's just go instruments week two now good practice i know that this is like a lesson so that's why it's got a lesson name but you know let me um also show you some good housekeeping um things that i do um, and this is because i do production music and i have to hand stuff over to uh music publishers and whatnot and um things need to be right. So I use uh, the uh, underscore a lot. And as you can see, I used it here. I'm going to use it a uh, use it here as well. And what I'd like to do is add the tempo of the song, which is 116, 116. And um, you don't need to write down BPM after that. It's understood that that's going to be the BPM. Um, and you know what? We can actually put that Maybe here, instruments, 116, underscore once again. And we are working in G minor, so underscore that. And, you know, it makes a longer title, but it gives us the, you know, the information that we need. Um, especially when we export our song. And I'll show you that later. So here we go. So we've got a need for something, something awesome, and that's going to come in the in our packs. This is 
the area where you'll find whatever packs come with Ableton, as well as um, stuff that you can purchase at the Ableton uh, website. Um, and uh, yeah, so something that comes with Live Suite now, which I'm pretty stuck, stoked about. It's, uh, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, the String Quartet by Spitfire Audio. Then go to our instruments. This is where you're going to find the uh, stuff you need. We've got individual um, string quartet. I don't know which one should I. How about Pizzicato? Just press return and it will become available. So let's hear what we can do with the pizzicato. Well, make sure that we record enable only the pizzicato. like what I was doing towards the end there a little bit more so I'm going to take a little bracket here and find that so we could only see what we need to see on all the notes that we did not play. Change those notes there. So we're going to close that bracket there going to select these guys, going to get rid of the errant notes there. I'm going to select all these, Command A, and we're pros now, so I'm just going to press Command Q, and that allows us, uh, what? Um, no, that's not what I wanted. That's not good. Command U. Sorry. And that quantizes the notes. Yeah, that's, you know, obviously not cool, so. See, that came out perfect right there, right? So all we have to do is um, copy these notes. And, you know, just so we can hear, I want to hear just that one thing. Double note that plays here. We can't have that. Get rid of you and go back to this guy here. This is a weak one. You see, it's uh, 
velocity is too low, let's have it match the rest. Cool. So let's do something. Uh, let's hear what's going on. Let's see what's going on with the macros here. Ooh. See how we can mess with the sound. And here's something that's really awesome. So we we did this uh, swell thing here with the um, with our with our uh, reverb, right? Where is that? Here it is. We can literally take this one and copy it. Control, copy, and put it somewhere else. And um, what we'll do is re we can retain its uh, values, um, but in certain instances we have to redo them. So in this instance, we are going to do that. And here's what I'm going to do this time. Gonna solo it. First of all, let's select this bracket here, and we're going to actually select this area right over here. Remember, everything is different because it's context sensitive, and we're gonna crop clip. See that right there? And now we're only gonna see what we want to see. Let's go back to our envelopes, and going to choose modulation this time and um, yeah so we can maybe just select from here to there and I'm going to control click and um, actually what was I that's not what I want to affect what I want to do is affect the uh, the dry wet so I'm gonna manipulate that so we can become active and now it is right here, it's active waiting for us. So, um, so we are going to use modulation this time and modulation allows us to do some funky stuff and we're gonna control um, and find the insert shape. You see what's going on here now? We've got a whole different thing. We can create actual envelopes and we can we can manipulate them, change their uh, their length and we can copy them. And so let's see what happens with this. See the invisible hand there different than the automation because the automation then you've got oh, I'll show you what the automation difference is go back to the automation and we're going to manipulate the same parameter in this case we're going to rise from bottom to top and let's see let's see what that looks like so we've got the red dot now and it's going to keep rising keep rising so one is modulation and the other is Automation. So if we go back to our modulation, um, one thing is for sure is that this is way too high. So I'm just gonna make that lower. Or we can just change our minds and realize that it sucks and just... Yeah, we're just going to stick with that right there for now because, frankly, I was going to do something cooler and it didn't turn out so cool. So uh, let's hear what it sounds like with the rest of the music. Start from the beginning. 
down. One thing I wanted to do, this, this really loses energy here, right? Not cool. So, I'm gonna look at that. Why does it lose energy? And um, part of the reason why is because it slows down um, with uh, the, where is that? You can see that things that are automated uh, will show with the blue dots and the red dots here at CD Arpeggiator. So, um, because it slows down, it kind of loses energy. So let's give it multiple tempo. Tempi, sorry. And click here and there. And let's see what happens here. I mean, that's one way of dealing with uh, the loss of energy. There are so many other things that we can do. Uh, but let's do that and maybe turn up the uh, reverb. Actually, the sky is right here, right? So let's modulate sky. Copy that. Hmm, interesting, that didn't work. Wonder what's up with that. The macro, interesting. Note to self. I'm gonna copy that or basically cut it and show it something that we can add to our automation instead. Cool. So our little empty area here, right over here, this is a good place for us to copy and um, Basically, you know what? I'm just going to create one note I'm hearing in my mind. And um, we can go to our note view right over here. And that high note is what I want. And in our envelopes, I am going to literally um, take our arpeggiator and turn it off just for that one note. So we should have something like this. Oh, well, another thing is we're going to disable its looping. So here we go. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong. I want really high. Oh, and while we're at it, we might as well keep Sky going for it. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. 